Hey folks, this is a seminar that I gave at Cabela's in Tulalip, Washington for the Everett Coho Derby Angler Extravaganza. I talk about Dick Knight spoons specifically and how to rig them, the methods you can fish them, and the action that you want to achieve to be successful for fall coho. So stick around for some great information on Dick Knight spoons. So my name is Doug St. Denis. I'm with Ridge to River Outdoors. I'm a pro guide and I'm on Dick Knight Spoons factory team. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Dick Knight Spoon specifically for getting into coho. We're gonna cover how to rig them for three different methods of fishing. And we're also going to look at some video of what the spoon is supposed to look like because the action on the spoon is everything, okay? Outside of color that we're gonna talk about. So Dick Knight spoons are in fact one of the most versatile lures on the market today. As you can see, I've got a few in my box here. And I've always got to stock up well in advance, of, especially for salmon season, because I go through so many. So when I see anglers out there and they're buying one or two, and they plan on going on a day or a weekend of fishing, I'm thinking, you know, I think you're gonna need a few more spoons because in the river, we have obstructions, stumps, rocks, other anglers, trees, brambles. Losing a dick night is going to happen. But fortunately, they don't cost as much as some of the other lures that are on the market, and they're just as effective. Dick Knight spoons have been responsible for some state records, and they're a great lure for fishing coho. And we know we use them for trout and kokanee and a lot of other species, but they're really good for coho. So let's talk about the techniques for coho fishing the Dick Knight spoon. One of my favorites is, of course, drift fishing. Then there's also casting and retrieving. Sometimes there are some areas that you're going to fish and you're not going to drift fish. You're gonna cast and retrieve. As an example, coho, a little later in the run, like to get in the wood. Well, when you have trees down, you need to feel confident you can get up in there, cast up into that stuff and retrieve those spoons. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to retrieve the spoon so that you have the right action on it to trigger that bite. And then of course you control the spoons. Jim Stahl with Northwest Guides talked about trolling earlier and trolling is very effective. And I brought a couple examples uh, that are rigged up. You guys can take a look at them before you leave tonight so you can get an eye on how that's done. This is how I rig mine. Jim might rig his slightly different, but we're pretty close to rigging them the same way. You can also, believe it or not, plunk. A lot of anglers discount plunking for coho, but I'm gonna tell you that plunking for coho does in fact work upriver. When you have flow and you find a run where the fish are moving up through, you can plunk. We were getting into coho last year plunking for pink salmon. So don't think that plunking is just for pink salmon. You can plunk from a bank and you can plunk from a boat. So it allows you to get out there in the river depending upon how you set everything up and let the river hydraulics make that spoon wobble the way it's supposed to, right? So drift fishing. I think drift fishing is one of the most effective ways to fish a Dick Knight spoon, and it's easy. You can drift fish from a bank, and you can also drift fish from a boat. So it really lets people do uh, both, regardless of where you are. The setup for drift fishing a Dick Knight spoon is the classic Northwest drift fishing setup. If you guys have ever seen that, you essentially have some lead, right? So that you can tick across the bottom. You have a leader and you have your Dick Knight. Okay, the setup is the same as if you're gonna fish cheaters and yarn or, you know, something like that. You guys can look at those a little closer. I've got a picture up here, and if you look at what the setup looks like, 
A lot of people ask me, they say, well, why do you run that five millimeter bead up there? Well, I'm just as guilty as anyone else and I've over my gear into the rod tip, right? Now, you can replace that, you can get it fixed, but it ruins your day fishing, right? So I put a five millimeter bead on there because it prevents my, ta my terminal tackle from pulling up into the eye and popping that eye. Not to mention the clients that are in my boat, they may over reel as well, especially when they have a fish on. I run a snap swivel. Now I run a size 10 snap swivel for my lead, okay? And then I put a four millimeter bead after that. The only purpose of the four millimeter bead is to protect the knot to my barrel swivel, okay? I don't want that snap swivel with the weight on it banging against that knot and breaking my knot off. So I run a four millimeter bead, right? Then of course I'm running a 10 millimeter barrel swivel and then I put my leader on and then I put my dick knight on. Now, a couple things about this drift fishing setup. The amount of weight that you use needs to just be enough to tick across the bottom about every six to eight feet. You don't want so much weight on there that it's dragging the bottom and you can feel the bottom constantly because what's gonna happen is your lure is going to lay over because the river is moving and you're gonna get hung up. So lighten your lead. I run a range of leads depending upon water conditions and where I'm fishing and it starts at three quarters of an inch and goes all the way up to two and a quarter inches. If I go beyond that, now I'm fishing little cannonballs, half ounce lead like what I've got on there. And I fish 3 16th lead, solid lead, okay? The other thing is your leader length. Three to five feet is good for the Dick Knight spoons for drift fishing. But when the water gets really clear like it is now and the river is low, the rivers are clear, they're gin clear, I'll run my leaders to about six feet for drift fishing, but I won't go beyond six. I want to get the gear away from, or I want the, the Dick Knight spoon away from my terminal tackle. All right, the fish are already spooked because the water's so clear. So I wanna get that presentation out there and away from them. So the setup is simple. A little later, you can come up and look at the rods and see it firsthand what it looks like in case you wanna pick up some gear. Now, drift fishing is easy. Anyone can do it, but there are some tips. If you're bank fishing, increase your line to 12 pound. I'm in a boat, so I run a 10 pound main line, 10 pounds. And trust me, it works. It's a dynamic system. The rod absorbs shock, you can move the boat. I can get away with 10 pound mainline and eight pound leaders because I'm in a boat. But if you're on a bank, you need to increase your mainline a little, especially if you're in one of those holes and you don't have the freedom to chase the fish or move. If you're out on a gravel bar and you know you can walk, you know, 40, 50 yards either direction to chase your fish, then you can fish a lighter line. Guys, it's very important when you're drift fishing a Dick Knight spoon to maintain the correct tension on your line, okay? I see guys cast, they let their gear fall to the bottom, they don't mend their line, there's a big belly, and so what ends up happening, what you don't see is what's going on in the water, and you have this big S, you're not fishing effectively. So you need to, once you hit the water, raise a little, mend your line, and then keep the correct tension. If you have a lot of slack, the movement of the river is gonna grab it and it's gonna be a big S shape. So when you, if you don't get hung up and you actually hook a fish, when you go to set the hook here, that fish is up here. There's a chance you may pull it right out of their mouth rather than hooking them where you want to. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is keep your rod tip pointed at your line the whole time. So if I cast here and I'm working a drift through here, maybe I'm reeling a little bit and I'm following my line, that allows me to one, I've mend my line, 
my gear is straight in front of me and it allows me to set the hook up and not sideways. We're fishing salmon guys, not bass and crappie. They don't have those mouths that extend out so that when you set that hook, you're gonna catch them in the side, right? You wanna set that hook straight up and down. And as I said, you may have to slightly reel to maintain action on the lure. I've said this before, and I say it constantly when people fish with me. Slow down your reel. You're reeling too fast. It is very slow, okay? It's very slow. It's just enough to put action on the lure. If you're fishing faster water, you may not have to reel at all slower water you're gonna have to reel a little bit more okay guys that wraps it up for part one make sure you move on to part two for some more great information on how to rig and fish dick knight spoons for coho salmon dick knight spoons helping anglers of all ages catch fish since the 1940s vision hooks and tackle find them at your local tackle retailer